hari bersubuh. Tonight on First at Nine this Sunday, the 7th of January 2024. Towards growth, Sri Lanka targets 5% growth by 2025, says the President. Further reveals new legislation to ensure timely graduations at state universities. You come in, we'll have a law. As you come, you must do it and go out in three or four years. Unless it's medicine, it's fine. Crisis averted. Amid accusations, the former Minister of Health claims he took steps to avert a health care crisis in the country. <laughs> Fostering investments. The Securities and Exchange Commission approves regulatory framework to facilitate the issuance and listing of infrastructure bonds on the Colombo Stock Exchange. Breaking records. Sri Lanka records over 25,000 tourist arrivals within just the first four days of 2024. Good evening and welcome to Adhaderna First at Nine. I'm Aditya Drisingha joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now in your top story tonight, addressing the students of the University of Jaffna during his visit to the Northern Province, President Ranil Vikramasinghe highlighted the pivotal role that universities play in national development, particularly in the field of agriculture. During discussions, President Vikramasinghe further revealed that a new piece of legislation will be passed to ensure that undergraduates in state universities pass out within three to four years. Now let us take you through some of the latest on the President's four-day visit to Jaffna. A meeting with students and the academic staff of the University of Jaffna was held this morning under the patronage of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Everyone must do not subsistence agriculture. We push them to do modern agriculture so over the next four or five years. So there again, the universities have a role to play in agriculture. We should be some of the centers. Basically, Jaffna University should be the center for the north. We have asked the universities to expand and we are going to put some new universities by the government. And there will be non-government universities which will go on to the new, newest technology. We must have that technology. The industry for technology, the digital technology, AI. So let's just keep producing them, produce them producing. Just imagine the number of people who can't get into the, who are qualified who can't get into the medical faculty. Then we are going to reorganize the vocational training and have nine vocational training boards for each province and then you all can train for the market. In education development, the different provinces will have to do in accordance with national policy. What is the main task this year? Just to ensure that we have 2% growth. That ensures you all have jobs. Government will have revenue. So from where we are, we have come up to this. We go to 5% in 2025. And then we keep pushing it up. About 7% by 2030. Then you all must run for 10 years on high growth rate. You have to ensure government will keep these numbers going. And that we will have basically 7 to 8% growth. Now some people ask why I say 2048. Our agreement with these creditors are such that they will stretch out and give us about 20 years to pay. So if you sign this year, it will be 2044. To that parallel to that, you run a high growth rate. So we have to now get together and go to a new economy. Useless saying we are going to do this, we are going to do that. We have to develop it and come up with our own sweat, not anyone else. Chinese did it with their own sweat. Japanese did it with their own sweat. Koreans did it with their own sweat. Vietnamese did it with their own sweat. No one to help them. There are no one to help us, but we can make it. So that's your future that we have to work on. If we do this in the next two years, from there things will start working. As you get 2%, there will be some jobs. As you go to 5 there will be more. And let's see how it comes. And Jaffna will be one place that will develop. Time period that a state university student is spending as academic qualification for like degree is like very more than a private graduate. So when we move on to the job market, we are lacking experience, whereas they have more experience than us. So from a state university, 19 at 18, came out at 21. It's the internal issues in the university. I mean, people are just disrupting universities. Uh, we 
when we were in university, we had the agreement with the vice chancellor that the last two weeks of the first term will be set aside for strikes. We'll have to, one way to make it work, which all are going to be shocked. You come in, we'll have a law. As you come, you must do it and go out in three or four years. Unless it's medicine, it's fine. President Ranil Vikrama Singha also met Arun Siddharth, the chairman of the Civil Society Centre in Shafna. During the discussion, Siddharth highlighted several issues affecting Sri Lankans in the north, while also highlighting that MPs representing Jaffna residing in Colombo seemed to avoid addressing those issues. During the meeting with the President, Siddharth emphasized on the need for a more vocal response from political figures concerning the challenges faced by the local population. During the meeting, attention was also drawn to caste-based schools in the north. The President requested 100 such caste-based schools to be identified and assured that those 100 schools would undergo immediate development within the next six months. Additionally, President Vikrama Singha pledged to investigate Division of Secretariats which prioritised caste-based concerns and neglect issues affecting the general public. Meanwhile, President Ranil Vikrama Singha also convened a meeting with the members of the United National Party from the Jaffna and Kirinochi districts today. Highlighting the deep connection between Sri Lanka's Tamil civilization and the northern province, President Vikrama Singha pledged to connect the northern economy to the national economy swiftly. Hindu bhakti ke anta e Hindu siddhasthan vala tiyana sanchare atikaranna agostu masai balanne vel savatiyana avasthavidi vishala sankhyawak mehata gennwanna e wagema dakune tiyana asala perahara kataragama e watat e patten kandayam gedanla agostu masa vishala sankhyawak lankawata gen aayojakayan genna aayojana kalapa atikaranna diaspora watat me avilla aayojane karanne ehema diyunuwa kawahama තමයි රැකියා එන්නේ එහෙම දියුණුවක් නැත්තම් රැකියා එන්නේ නැහැ මම විවස්ථාව අනුව බලේ බෙදා හැරීමත් කරනවා එතකොට ඒ පළාත්මේ නායකත්වය ගන්න ඕනේ මධ්‍යම ආණ්ඩුවට බැන බැන ඉන්න බැහැ ඉතින් මේ කාලේ මට ඕනේ 100ට දෙකක දියුණුවක් 2024 ඇති කරලා 100ට 5ක දියුණුවක් 2025 ඇති කරන්න සමහර විට මට අමාරු තීරණ ගන්න වෙයි ජනප්‍රිය නොවන තීරණ ගන්න වෙයි now, meanwhile, addressing the numerous accusations leveled against the import of the substandard human immunoglobulin vaccine to Sri Lanka, former Minister of Health Kehli Ramukwala says that the country would have been in a desperate situation if they had failed to distribute the medicine promptly. Speaking at an event, the former Health Minister added that despite the insults received, appropriate decisions were taken to provide medicines to the general public on time. The former Minister of Health, Kehli Ramukwala, was repeatedly accused for allowing the distribution of substandard vials of human immunoglobulin imported into Sri Lanka. The most recent accusations against the former Health Minister were levelled by the All Ceylon Medical Officers Association yesterday. In the meantime, the former Minister of Health addressed this issue during the opening ceremony of Anosusala in Pirimathalava. ඔන්නේ <laughs> In the meantime, senior consultant physician Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikrama was appointed as the new president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association yesterday. Accordingly, the newly appointed SLMA president will assume duties as the 136th president.
ಔಷಧಿ ಹೀಗೆ ಕ್ರಮೇನ್ ಮಗ ಹರಿವಿನ್ ಪಾವತಿನೋ ಇದನ್ನ ಏನಿ ಸಾಮ ತಮ್ಮ ಅಪಿ ವಿಶೇಷಜ್ಞ ವೈದ್ಯವರು ಏಕತು ಇಲ್ಲ ಸೌಖ್ಯ ಮಾತಾಂಶಿ ಭಾವಿತಾಕರ ಔಷಧ ಸಂಖ್ಯೆ ವ ಅತ್ಯವಶ್ಯ ಔಷಧ ವಲ್ಟ ಅಡು ಕರಲ್ಲ ಏವಾ ಗೆನೇಮಟ ಸೌಖ್ಯ ಮಾತಾಂಶಿಯಟ ಉಪದೇಶ ದೀಲ ಸೌಖ್ಯ ಮಾತಾಂಶಿಯಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಕಚ್ಚ ಕಲ್ಲ ಕಟೆಯುತು ಕರಣ್ಣಿ ತೋಟ ಅಪಿ ಬಲಾಪರತ್ತು ಏನವ ವಿಶೇಷೇನ್ ಮವಶ್ಯ ಔಷಧ ಅದು ಕೇಲ ಬಾಲ್ಲೆ ಏವಟ ಸಲಕಿ ಲೇಮು ಕರ ಹಮ ಮೇ ತೀನ ಔಷಧ ಹೀಗೆ ಇಕ್ಮನಿನ್ ಮಗ ಹರಗನ್ ಪುಲ್ವಾಂ ವೇ ಕೇಲ Now in other news, the Department of Meteorology forecasts that rains are expected to increase in the northern, north central and eastern provinces and added that heavy rains above 100 mm are expected in parts of the country, including in the western, Sabaragamu and the central provinces and in the Gaul and Matara districts. Meanwhile, the fallout of the extreme rainfall which ensued over several parts of the island recently, destroying crops and disrupting traffic along several roads, continue to affect nearly 2,000 individuals in the Uwa province. Though the torrential rains which affected parts of the country during the past few days came to halt, the aftermath of the heavy downpours continued to affect several communities throughout the island. The heavy rains recently led to landslides in the Alla Pupurasa area in Badulla. The residents of Pupurasa revealed that another landslide was reported in a separate area yesterday, although rainfall has eased. A paddy field, a tea plantation and a residence were damaged by the landslide. The landslide disrupted access to six villages in the area including Navalagama, Badivela and Pupula. Meanwhile, around a week earlier, a landslide and a subsidence occurred in the Madol Simamatigahayana area along the Pasara Ekiria road. This resulted in the complete disruption of traffic in the area, making it unsafe for vehicles and pedestrians. Nearly 2000 residents of Matigahatana and Ekiria were inconvenienced as a result. The residents further allege that no authority has taken the matter into consideration so far. <laughs> Analyzing the latest meteorological data available, the Med Department forecasts that heavy rains can be expected in parts of the country tomorrow. Accordingly, heavy downpours above 100 mm are expected in parts of the western, Sabaragamua and central provinces and in the Gaul and Matara districts. In its forecast, the department further added that the rains are expected to increase in the north, north central, eastern and over provinces. Now, amid a recent spike in measles cases and a new variant of COVID-19, dengue cases have also seen an increase supplemented by the recent uptick in inclement weather as we just saw. According to the latest data of the Dengue Control Unit during the first week of this year so far, health officials have identified 1,871 dengue patients in the country. The director of the Dengue Control Unit, Dr. Sudat Samarivira, says that from October last year, an increase of dengue patients was observed. In view of the worsening condition, a special dengue prevention week will be implemented from today onwards. Due to the adverse weather conditions, health officials noted a rapid increase of dengue patients in the country during the past few months. Majority of the patients were reported in the western and the northern provinces. Within the two provinces, most cases were reported from the Colombo, Gampaha and Jaffna districts. The first time I was in the dengue, I was in the dengue, and 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 I was in the dengue, මේ 2023 වර්ෂයේ වැඩියෙන්ම ඩෙංගු රෝගීන් වාර්තා වුණේ අවසාන මාසයේ දෙසැම්බර් මාසයේ ඒ රෝගීන් 11910ක් ඔක්තෝබර් මාසයේ සිට සෑම මාසයකම සීග්‍ර වැඩිවීමක් දෙසැම්බර් මාසයේ දක්වාම අපි දැක්කා ඒ නිසා මේ 2024 ජනවාරි මාසයේ තාමත්ම තීරණාත්මකයි accordingly the ministry of health has taken steps to implement a special dengue prevention week from today covering 70 selected MOH divisions The inauguration of the island-wide dengue control program was held today at the Kompany Vidya with the participation of Health Ministry Secretary Dr. Palita Mahipala and Inspector General of Police Deshabandhu Thennakon. මේව වලක්වන්න පුළුවන් දේවල්. ඉතින් ඩෙංගු මර්ධනය කිරීමට නම් Taman ජීවත් වෙන පරිශ්‍රය පිරිසුදුව තබා ගත යුතුයි. කළ යුතු තම තමන් කළ යුතු කටයුත්තක් තමන්ගේ වගකීම. මේ වන විට එකදු හෝ නිවසියෙක් මේ සඳහා සහභාගී වෙන්නේ නැහැ. ඉතින් ඔවුන් අපේක්ෂා කරනවා පොලිසියත් ජන සෞඛ්‍ය දෙපාර්තමේන්තුවේ නිලධාරිනුත් ඇවිල්ලා ඔවුන්ගේ ගේ පිටිපස සහ ඔවුන්ගේ පරිශ්‍රයන් වල තියෙන මදුරන් බොවන ස්ථාන ඉවත් කිරීම ඔවුන් කරනවා කියලා. ඉතින් ඇත්ත වශයෙන්ම මහ ජනතාවගෙන් ලැබෙන සහයෝගය ඩෙංගු Accordingly, dengue prevention operations took place in MOH areas in Colombo, Valawatha, Bhagavan Thalava, Bandha 
Karavela, Trincomalee and many areas around the island. Taking you through some more local updates, during the ongoing Yuktia special operation aimed at curbing the spread of narcotics island-wide, a 16-year-old was arrested with 8 grams of methamphetamine in possession by the Aungala police. Meanwhile, a total of nine suspects were apprehended in Adhrupuvidya in Colombo with heroin in possession. Now let's take a look at the latest attempts by the Sri Lanka's law enforcement agencies to curb drug-related criminal activity island-wide. The Yukti Special Operation, which is currently in place to curb drug trafficking and other organized crimes, continued for the 21st day today. Accordingly, a 16-year-old was apprehended along with 8 grams of methamphetamine during a search operation conducted at a residence in the Galbahera area following a tip-off received by the Ahungala police. Following the interrogation, it was unveiled that the teen was involved in drug trafficking under the instructions of a drug dealer residing abroad. Meanwhile, the Kalutura North Police recovered 16 grams of heroin in possession of a person travelling along the Sri Sumangaramavata in Kalutura. During the interrogation, the suspect revealed information regarding a woman involved in drug trafficking along with him. Subsequently, measures were taken to raid the residence of the suspected woman. Following the search, the police confiscated a stock of heroin discovered from the residence. Measures were also taken to arrest the woman involved in drug trafficking. Concurrently, a drug dealer Hathur Singh Dilhani, infamous under her alias Kuru Asha, was apprehended by the Mulleria police along with the stock of heroin last night. A bus and a three-wheeler suspected belonging to the suspect was also seized by the police. In addition, two other suspects involved in drug trafficking were arrested in the Koskoda and Mulleria areas as well. The search operation carried out in several residences in Adurupavidya in Colombo led to the apprehension of nine suspects with heroin in possession. Meanwhile, amidst the ongoing Yukti operation, a motorcyclist who had evaded the Pandur North police was subsequently arrested with 12 grams of heroin in possession. During the interrogation, it was revealed that he had been transporting illicit drugs belonging to a drug dealer currently hiding in Dubai. Now, meanwhile, independent MP Dr. Nalika Gudeheva says that the opposition is in the process of building an alliance in order to form a new government in the future. Criticizing the government's efforts, the opposition's efforts rather, National People's Power leader MP Anurakumar Desanayaka says a new political era must be built through the upcoming, the upcoming elections. With that, let's take a look at the latest views exchanged in the political arena. ृष्ण <laughs> विपक्ष Sajid Pema Dasala Gunanagan Palaniki, Me Pariwartan Aperta in the Puluan, Sumbun, Dasaka Ganana Karandula, Tapala, 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 Dahana Meta Tusala, Visara Tusala, Visiakara Tusala, Sajid Tusala. One of them, Me Major Desapala Pariki, the Piava Sankara Nuna.
Now in your business news, the Securities Exchange Commission has approved a regulatory framework to facilitate the issuance and listing of infrastructure bonds on the Columbus Stock Exchange. This decision by the SEC is aimed at fostering both foreign and local investments infrastructure projects, which will contribute to economic development. The SEC noted that the new framework is necessary for Sri Lanka to develop a market for infrastructure bonds and raise the long-term capital needed for infrastructure facilities. The Securities and Exchange Commission recently approved a regulatory framework to facilitate the issuance of listing of infrastructure bonds on the Colombo Stock Exchange. Issuing a statement in this regard, the SEC noted that the scope of infrastructure development in emerging economies has evolved significantly in recent decades and now comprises a broad range that includes traditional infrastructure projects such as power, oil and gas, and water, as well as low-carbon, climate-resilient infrastructure projects such as renewable energy projects. The SEC said it carried out a study of comparable jurisdictions which had successfully used infrastructure bonds listed in the capital market to finance major development projects of their respective governments. Aimed at fostering development, transparency and investor confidence in the capital market, the SEC has set a capital market reforms agenda which includes 12 key areas for action including roads, rail, water management, waste management systems, airports, seaports, mixed development projects, natural disaster protection systems, deep water ports, gas supply systems, utility projects and telecommunications infrastructure. The regulatory body further said that the introduction of infrastructure financing products are part of the reforms agenda and that the CAC is expected to market this product actively among potential issuers. The regulatory framework for infrastructure bonds will include provisions to ensure investor protection, stringent due diligence, disclosure and reporting requirements for issuers in order to keep investors informed on the performance of the infrastructure projects. Disclosure requirements include details of the project in which the capital raised is deployed or allocated, progress updates on how the project fulfills its core purpose and objectives, benefits to the public at large and any deviations in the use or allocation of the capital proceeds. Now, meanwhile, bringing to you some good news early in 2024, Sri Lanka records over 25,000 tourist arrivals just within the first four days of the new year. With a total of 25,619 arrivals recorded from the 1st to the 4th of January 2024, Sri Lanka saw the highest number of dairy arrivals within those four days on Wednesday, the 3rd of January, when 7,251 tourists arrived in Sri Lanka. Within just the first four days of January this year, Sri Lanka was able to successfully close in on almost a quarter of the total number of arrivals recorded in the entirety of January last year. 5,060 Russian tourists amounted to nearly 20% of the total arrivals within just the four days of January. Coming in second were the Indian tourists with a total of 3,333 arrivals recorded within the first four days of 2024. A significant number of tourist arrivals were recorded from Germany, the United Kingdom, Australia, China, France, the Netherlands, the United States and the Maldives. Sri Lanka recorded a total of 1,487,303 arrivals in 2023, seeing a tremendous improvement compared to 2022, where the figure stood at 719,978. Now, meanwhile, in your latest corporate updates, Phoenix Homeopathic Private Hospital, considered to be Sri Lanka's first homeopathic Private hospital, fully equipped with modern facilities, was recently inaugurated in Kadavatha. In the meantime, Alumex PLC, in its corporate disclosure, revealed that the company appointed two new non-executive non -executive independent directors to the company. With that, let's take a look at the corporate news segment for the evening. Private hospital was recently inaugurated in Kadavatha under the patronage of State Minister of Indigenous Medicine, Sisira Jayakodi. Homeopathic practitioner Dr. P.M. Chatra Hattara Singh took the initiative to launch this hospital, which provides treatment within the internationally acclaimed field of homeopathic medicine. The Phoenix Hospital is considered to be the first homeopathic private hospital built in Sri Lanka, fully equipped with modern facilities. Patients can receive homeopathic medical treatments, psychological treatments and psychiatric consultations within the hospital. In the meantime, the board of directors of Alumex PLC announced the appointment of two new directors to its board. Accordingly, Devakateran's Ranil De Silva and MJS Rajakaria were appointed as new non-executive independent directors of the company with effect from the 3rd of January 2024. 
In its corporate disclosure, the company stated that the newly appointed directors have no relevant interest in the shares issued by the company as at the date of their appointment. In other corporate news, First Capital Holdings PLC announced the resignation of Minet Pereira and Dr. Nishan Dimel, who were serving as independent non-executive directors of the company. The resignations were effective from the 1st of January 2024. The company highlighted that the decision of the two former directors to resign from the board was to facilitate the restructuring of the First Capital Group boards, adding that the above directors did not have any relevant interest in shares of the company as of the 1st of January 2024. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Other Derner First at 9. Stay in touch with us on www.otherderner.lk for the latest developments around the clock. Thank you. Have a great night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit otherderner.lk.